less than 3.4. All right. So this time we're going to get you to multiply fractions um, by mixed numbers. Now before we can do that, we have to do a little bit of review on mixed numbers and how we change them. There's a simple rule when you're multiplying mixed numbers. You can never multiply them in mixed number form. They must be changed into improper form. Now to help you out, remember our basics. This is a basic fraction. There's nothing wrong with it. Okay. This is an improper. And this is a mixed. Those are your three forms of your fractions. You cannot multiply anything in this format. But if you change that mixed number into a improper number, you can. So how do you do that? Well, there's several ways of looking at it. And when we first started, you take the two and you can split it into the two, into the ones, and then you have a half, right? Now, anything divided by itself is one, so I can convert this into, into this one into a two over two, and this one into a two over two, and then add them all up, I get two, four, and one is five over two. Now, that's a long what, lot to do. If you remember from before, we always did the denominator times the numerator, I'm going to run out of space here, plus, oh gosh, I said numerator. Hit the back up. Okay, I'm going to run out of space here, so let's change it. Okay, I'm going to take the, it's going to be the denominator times the whole number plus the numerator. And that is all over the denominator. That's your formula if you want to use it. Okay, if you take a look at two and a half here, I took this two, the denominator, I multiplied it by the whole number, and I added the numerator. So 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5, and everything stays over the same denominator. So here we go. I want you to try to do these three. So pause the recording and do it. All right, you should be done now. 3 and 1 eighth becomes 8 times 3 plus 1 all over 8. 8 times 3 is 24, so this becomes 25 over 8. 3 times 5 plus 2 all over 3. 3 times 5 is 15 plus 2 is 17 over 3. The last one is 2 and 3 quarters, so it's 4 times 2 plus 3. We're still working in quarters. So 4 times 2 is 8, plus 3 is 11, over 4. So that's how you get from a improper, sorry, from a, uh, a mixed fraction to an improper fraction. Okay, now we have to go backwards. Now, to, to take an improper fraction and turn it into a mixed fraction, you need to know how many times does 6 go into 15 and what's left over. Okay, well, if you want, you can break it all into 6s here. That's 1. Six, that you get one, that's one. This is another one, and there's three six left over. So that becomes one plus one, so that becomes two and three six, which reduces to two and a half. Okay, but I'm not worried about this right now. I'm more concerned, can you get that? So, how does this work out? How many times does the denominator go into the numerator, and what's the remainder? This is how you do it. You take a look at it. When I've got, uh, I guess it's, uh, what was the question up here? Uh, 15 over 6 was our question. Okay, how many times does 6 go into 15, and what's the remainder? Well, 6 times 2 is 12, right? So and that means that it goes in two times. And if, it, if that's a 12, 12 and 3 is 15, so my remainder is 3. And since we're still working in 6, that's what it looks like. So we have to get you to review that stuff from grade 7 and see if you can do it. Okay, so here are four questions I want you to do. So pause the create recording and do it. Okay. I'm going to do this as a divide question just to help you out. Okay. How many times does 5 go into 12? It goes in two times. So it goes two whole times, and there is two fifths left over. I'm going to go over here to this one. 7 goes into 18 two times. That's 14. There's four left over. So your answer is 2 and 4 sevenths. Down here, 3 goes into 11 three times. That's a 9. 
2 left over, so your answer is 3 and 2 thirds. And the last one, 6 into 17, it says 12, it goes 2 times, subtract that, you get a 5, so it's 2 and 5, 6. Now again, that's a remove, that is a, uh, a review. You should be well, well aware of what I just did there. All right, if you open your textbook, page 121, let's look at the investigation problem here. It says here, during the salmon drift, volunteers collect catch information from fisher people. A catcheta volunteered for three and a half hours. Onita followed for two thirds of the time that a catcheta <laughs> volunteered. How long did Onita volunteer, and how can you find out? So she's finding she is going to volunteer for two thirds of the time that the other, that the young man did. So two thirds times three and a half. Okay. So what I would do normally with you is I'd have you set it up in and go into your class, grab a partner, and try to figure out how to do it, and then come back and explain your methodology. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do it as a fraction block simulation here for you. So this is one of the solutions that you can be using to solve this question. So taking a look, I'm going to grab my spell behind my paperwork here, so give me a second to find it. Okay. Now, if you remember the fraction blocks, that we used before, you probably, well, I hope you remember, the hexagons were a one, so it would look like this. And here's another one. And here's the third one. Okay. And the last one was a half. Okay. Now, we need two-thirds of each of these. So I'm going to divide each one of these shapes into three equal pieces. If you remember that, this is how this works. Hopefully, you'll remember. Okay? Now, remember that this here, the hexagon, was equal to one. The trapezoid was equal to a half. The triangle was equal to a sixth. And the, rhombo, the, the rhombus was equal to a third. Remember this from before? OK, so now I want to divide uh, three halves. I want to take two thirds of each of these. OK, so two thirds, that's two out of three. OK, so that's this one here is two thirds, because each one is a third. This is a third and a third and a third. So that's two thirds. This is a third again and a third and a third. So that's two thirds. And finally, this one here is a sixth. So now I can put them all together. And you can see that this gives us quite a mess, doesn't it? Okay. So you take a look at the sixth, the thirds. And I've got two thirds. And that gives me two plus two plus two. So I've got four thirds. Sorry, not four thirds. Six thirds. I have to add to that one sixth. Now, I can't make, um, sorry, I said two thirds here. It should be two sixths. Okay, so I've got two thirds, six thirds, and two sixths. Well, if you take a look at this, it's actually kind of easy because six divided by three is just two. Okay, and that means I have two sixths. Well, two six reduces. So my answer is two and a third. Now I don't know about you. <laughs> that sounds like that's a that's a pretty um, difficult way to do it. It's much easier to convert it to an improper fraction and then multiply like we've been doing. Fraction blocks are a pain, as you know from last year. So let's take three and a two, three and a half. We're going to convert this into an improper fraction. So remember that's two times three, the numerator times the whole number, plus one, all over two. So that gives me seven over two. Now remember, you cannot use three and a half in a multiplication of a fraction. So this is 7 over 2, multiplied by 2 thirds. Now I can go 7 times 2, top times top, 2 times 3, bottom times bottom. 7 times 2 is 14, 2 times 3 is 6. Now I have to reduce this. What goes into both 14 and 6? That's 2. So your answer is 7 thirds. Now you might think that 7 thirds is not the same as 2 and a third. But remember, 3 goes into 7 two times. All right, so that's two full times with one remaining. So you'll see that they're actually the same answer. Which one did you find easier? Well, if you chose the fraction block one, you're going to be doomed for disappointment because when we get into the bigger and more complicated fractions, you can't use it. So hopefully, 
you liked the um, basically the converting method here, which is called symbolic. Hopefully you like that better. Okay. Uh, which method did you find most difficult to follow? I probably would have guessed that you'd find the, the fraction blocks more difficult, but maybe not. You have your choice. All right, turn your page. Okay, because of its ease, we're going to be using the improper fraction multiplication method. So here we go. First thing you have to do is make sure that there's no mixed fractions, that everything turns into an improper fraction. I'm not going to do the estimate. Forget about the estimate. Let's just do the improper fraction change. And I'm going to use the space right below it here. So this becomes 5 times 2 plus 2 over 5. And I'll multiply that by 2 times 1 plus 1 over 2. So there's my work for showing my improper to, fract improper to mixed. All right. So that becomes 5 times 2 is 10 plus 2. That's 12 fifths. And this is 2 times 1 plus 2. That is 3 halves. So now I have them in improper form. Now, <coughs> 12 fifths times 3 halves. Now that becomes 12 times 3 over 5 times 2. You know, I'm working down this time. 3, I'll go over here. 3 times 12 is 36. 5 times 2 is 10. That gives me, when I divide both by 2, 18 over 5. As a mixed fraction, 5 goes into 18 three times, that's 15, and from 15 to 18 is three more, so there is your mixed fraction. Okay? Were we correct in our estimation? We didn't do it. All right. So the answer is 3 and 3 fifths. All right, I'd like you to try this one. Reduced improper, sorry, mixed form when you're done. All right, so our first thing is to convert to improper fraction. So this is 3 times 4 plus 1, so that becomes 13 over 3 times 12 over 5. Okay, now I'm going to expect, I don't need to see the work for this, I'm just going to expect it to appear. If it appears correctly, check, check. If it doesn't appear correctly, obviously then you got the wrong question at the beginning and you're going to get a wrong answer. So now we can take and go 13 times 12, top times top, 3 times 5, bottom times bottom. Now 13 times 12... <coughs> when you do the work on that one, comes out to be, let me do my math over here, 13 times 12. Oh, my other one did it wrong. I took and did the, the math the other way. So I'm going to have to do it math. 13 times 12. See if you can follow me. 2 times 13 is 26. Put down the 0. And there's your first 13, 6, 5, 1. So this is 156 over 15. Now what goes into both of these? 3 does. So, 3 into 156, that's 15. So that one there is a 5. Bring down the 6, and that's 2. So this one is 52, when I divide by 3. And divide this by 3, I get 5. Now, that's an improper fraction. As a mixed fraction, 5 goes into 52 10 times. That's 50. And to go from 50 to 52 is 2 more, and we're working in fifths. So there's your answer. All right. Bob works for two and a half hours every Saturday as his part-time. His boss asks him if he is able to work one and a half times uh, as much next Saturday. How many hours will Bob work? Actually, I think Bob's got a pretty disgusting boss. He's asking him this way. But we're going to do it anyway. So I need you to do this multiplication. So pause the recording and do it. All right. So. You have two choices here. You can go two and a half times one and a half, or you can do one and a half times two and a half. Both of them will work, and I'll show you. Okay? So two and a half, the improper fraction is five over two, and this is three halves. This is three halves times five halves. Okay? Same question, just different order. Five times three over two times two. 5 times 3 is 15, 2 times 2 is 4. Now 4 goes into 15 3 times, that's 12, and there's 2, sorry, there's 3 quarters left over. Over here we have 3 times 5, over 2 times 2, and then that is also 15 over 4, which is 3 and 3 quarters. So the answer, Bob will actually work 3 and 3 quarter hours. So how do I mark this? Well. Because this is a word problem and you're not told what to multiply or not, you have to set it up so that I can figure out, sorry, I have to figure out that you know you're going to multiply. So if you know you're going to multiply and you write it down, you get a mark. 
Next, I'm going to mark the two improper mixed improper conversions. And then I'm going to be marking, can you multiply? Do you know to go top times top, bottom times bottom? And then do you actually get the right answer? And can you convert it into a mixed fraction correctly? And of course, because this one's actually in uh, a word problem, you need a sentence. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven marks for this word problem right here. Turn the page. Bob the Magician is doing an illusion for the grade A class in Sedgwick. He starts with one and a half chocolate bars on the table. He covers them with a cloth, and when he takes the cloth away, there are one and a third times as many chocolate bars on the table. What fraction were on the table? So, I'll give you a moment to do this question, so pause the recording and do it. Okay, so you've got it all done, hopefully. You can do one and one half times one and one third, or you can have it the other way around. It doesn't matter. Converting to improper fractions, this is three over two times four over three. Now top times top, bottom times bottom. That gives me 12 over six. 12 over six is actually two. So there were two chocolate bars on when he was done. So how am I gonna mark this? Do you know to multiply? Can you get the improper to mixed, mixed improper correctly? Do you know top times top? Can you get this? Can you reduce it? Can you put it in a sentence? If you take a look there, that is seven marks. Okay, I think that brings us to the assignment. Remember, we're at the middle of the unit, so make sure you're reviewing for the end of the units coming quick. So, I will see you in the next lesson.